interesting. But I'm not, I don't think this, I, I don't think that would. I mean, there might be for certain advantages. Yes. Certain applications you want, you might want a rather brittle sound, mind you. Can, can you explain to me a little bit more about the process? When, 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 I, when I use the term isotactic polypropylene, in my ignorance I'm saying things which I have no idea what I'm saying. What, 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 is, what is it I am actually saying when I say isotactic ah, polypropylene? Well, the thing is, if you take, a, you take this sort of linear chain here, this is, this is a model of polyethylene, basically, so you have a chain here which has got nothing on it except carbon atoms. Right. And that's why when you, when you stretch it out, it becomes very strong. It's as if all the carbon atoms are arranged as if they were in diamond. But in polypropylene, you actually have what we call a side group. You have a methyl group. You have something on the side. And that makes it into a helix. Right. Now, the question is, why is it called isotactic? Well, that's because a uh, very you know, Nobel Prize winning scientist called NASA discovered catalysts which would make it so that these metal groups always went on in the same way when you went up the chain. And they were called isotactic. It means sort of equal inclination, basically. <laughs> so they're all arranged in the same way. So that gives the material a regular helix. So it makes it regular. And so these, these atoms are attaching themselves to the carbon in a helix? Yes, they go around in a sort of, in a helix. And that means the whole thing is regular and it can crystallize. Right. And that's important because you want crystallinity to give you a high melting point, all these sort of things. Stiffness. So it, well, yes, and stiffness. But the polypropylene is of intermediate stiffness. Right. It's not as stiff as the polyethylene, but it's intermediate. Right. But it suits your purposes very well, really. From the damping perspective? Yes, it suits your purposes very well. So the, the, these, these molecules that are attached to the carbon molecules, is it these molecules that move or when it's subjected to the sand, or are all, all the molecules moving? When all it's the molecules are moving around, yes. Right. It's, called a, it's when it's going from the glass to a rubber, when it's going from an elastic solid to a viscous liquid, if you like. It's right. not there yet, but right. it's doing that. And that's why it's called, it's a viscoelastic relaxation process. Is, is this what I've, I've read somewhere where they're basically it's moving from a glass phase to a, a rubber. rubber transition it phase? Yes, it's is called a glass rubber transition, yes. Right. TG, yes. And it, it just so happens that it's around room temperature for polypropylene. <laughs> it suits your purposes. Hmm? Interesting. But it doesn't melt, of course. No, no. Until you get up to 130, whatever, 190, whatever. Right. So you've got a high temperature melting point. What what role is the carbon playing in this structure? Is it uh, is 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 it the carbon where the strength comes from, or is it the 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 structure of the geometry of the molecular structure that gives it the strength? No, the strength comes from the chain. Yes, from the helix yes, chain. Yes, from the helix from the chain. Yes, it's like pulling on a spring. It's just like pulling on a spring. Right. So you, and you can model it like that. So it would just be like it's just like a coiled spring, uh -huh. and the stiffness it can, is very close. You know, in these highly oriented materials, it's perhaps a third of the stiffness you'd get if it was perfect. Right. But you're just pulling on it, really. Uh, so once this has actually been formed and 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 we've created a sheet material. Mm. Obviously, then we've got to develop a process whereby we actually shape this material into exactly. useful, useful objects. And that's that's again where polypropylene is rather useful, because you can go up to the temperatures below the melting point, where it becomes pliable, but it still hasn't melted. So there's enough mobility in it, in the structure, to allow you to form it. And this is still a woven regarded oh, yes. as a woven structure, isn't oh, it? Oh yes, yes. So when when you're talking about hot compaction, you're you're literally talking about the outer skin, skin. of the material being melted. Ah, as what, it were. Is yes, that what, right? Ah, what happens here? Yes, is that if you take a sheet like this close to its melting point, then the trick is that the surface of each of these individual elements has a slightly lower melting point than the bulk interior. So, you, believe it or not, you can melt a thin skin on the surface of every element here quite uniformly. So, the, you then cool it down 
and that freezes and forms the matrix. Right. So you start off with a whole lot of fibers that are not connected in any way. You heat it up just below its melting point. A skin forms, okay. which melts. You cool it down, and that freezes. And then you've got the whole of this with a matrix of that skin, which is Fantastic. re... And that's the trick. And I think it wasn't really appreciated that this would happen. I think the sort of, you know, if you were just sort of commonsensical, you'd say, well, if I take something like this and I put it in a heated press, it'll start melting from the outside. <laughs> yes. But that's, if you do it carefully, then you can get each individual element. So if you were looking yes. at the fibre and it was a circle, yes. it, it, the whole of the outer perimeter it's would, like a would ring. melt. You have a ring. A ring of molten That's material. right. And then, of course, if you do it under a certain amount of pressure, that spreads out, fills all the gaps. And so you have a perfect 100% fibrous structure. fibrous structure, which is reinforced with the same polymer. D does, does the, so would the energy that is being absorbed in each one of these fibers, it would actually be absorbed in a, a, a straight line according to the <laughs> direction of the fiber. Is that, or would it, or does it? No, there is there is an element. Yes, it would. Yes, it, it does depend on. But that you know, you've got an average here. Yes. You've got an aggregate, so you wouldn't. You you that would wouldn't, wouldn't, that wouldn't be a. a that wouldn't part. wouldn't worry you. No, that right. wouldn't worry you. No. Interesting. No, no, no. It's, uh, but uh, that's something we discovered, isn't it? I mean, that if we hadn't met at this uh, meeting. The smart, smart where we presentation. Got, of well, that was for another of our inventions, <laughs> for our <laughs> lithium battery inventions. All oh, right, so oh, that that's a totally different invention. Yes. So you were there for a totally different yes. reason from yes. the materials that we were actually. Yes, that's right. That was for making rechargeable lithium batteries, and in fact, we just had lunch together, didn't we? That's right. And we started talking, and we thought, you know, we knew we could make a shape for you, but of course, we didn't know then that it would have everything you wanted, really.